Even if you've never consciously handled it, if you've played guitar over the last 15 years, you've likely touched some rich light. Traditionally black and the subject of much online tonal debate, this incredible material has a huge amount to offer. But what is rich light and how did it come to be? I'm John from Heavy Repping and this is The Science. If it's your first time here, don't forget to like and subscribe for all of the reviews, news, interviews, podcasts, videos and more concerning the biggest pick site on the internet. Thanks for watching. Over the last five years, I've played a lot of Rich Light picks, and when it came to making my own, it was the first material I wanted to craft with. Thanks to the wonderful people at Surface Matter, I was able to get some Rich Light of my very own and to start shaping the plectrums you see here. Spending more and more time with it, I wanted to know all about its history, and so after a lot of digging, here's what I found. Originating in the 1940s through the Rainier Plywood Company in Tacoma, Washington, the development of Rich Light was born of necessity. At this time, the aerospace industry was looking for a wood substitute for its tables. It had to be handsome, tough, and in ready supply. Experimentation at Rainier led to a material made from compressed cardboard and phenolic resin, which came to be known as Rich Light. First adopted by Martin Guitars in the late 2000s as an ebony substitute for fingerboards, it would find success in this application, later being used in all manner of instruments. Gibson, Sigma, Strandberg, Godin, Steinberger and more featured Rich Light as part of their line. Martin and Sigma continue to use it to this very day, and it features on 18 models in the Godin range. Aristides went one step further and made whole guitars out of it, so if you're a fan of the modern metal era, you've heard it doing its business. Besides its mercilessly handsome black presentation, Rich Light is tough. Unlike ebony, it doesn't shrink, its lack of grain makes it incredibly stable, and it requires little in the way of treatment. I know from my own experience that a tiny amount of wax is required to polish it, should the fancy take you. The most common type is Heritage Rich Light. 65% paper and 35% resin, its natural leathery finish has put it into many kitchens as a worktop material, not to mention its use as a replacement for steel and timber. That inherent toughness makes it brilliant for outdoor use and the lack of porosity means it's perfect for cutting boards, bar tops, skate ramps, and furniture. Site is certified, dishwasher safe and deeply abundant owing to the amount of recycled cardboard used in its assembly, it is quite the thing. But what about picks? Well, if you ask makers like Honey, Dragon, Widow and Leaf, you'll find huge support for Rich Light and its associated materials. I've personally made plectrums with Redstone, Skate Light, R50, a 50-50 blend, and Canyon Blue variants, all of which have their own characteristics and charms. Yes, it's very tough, making it good value, but it's also capable of great things. Relatively easy to work by hand, the nature of its surface results in a number of finishing options. Left unaltered, Rich Light has a slightly leathery texture and polished, its tackiness increases. Even in the hands of the aggressive, heavy-strung players with aluminium scratch plates, like me, it keeps delivering. Tonally speaking, it's comparable to ebony, with a warm, muscular response. Thicker models have huge reserves of power, but unlike most thermoplastics, it doesn't possess a pronounced top end. Like all materials, this can be altered with tip shape and beveling. Following a video I did in lockdown, I've watched the development of more sustainable pick approaches with keen interest. Makers like Howling Monkey, Arcanum and Crow's Customs have done a huge amount with Tagawa, and wood picks have been around since the Druids. What makes Rich Light so appealing is its abundance, resilience and breadth of application. The incredible stiffness it demonstrates even at lower thicknesses makes it tremendous for both acoustic and electric use, never mind its broader deployment on mandolin and other instruments. Though sheets of rich light aren't particularly expensive, the time required to shape it and, crucially, remove smaller tool marks is significant. That fundamental toughness and density makes it incredibly resistant to abrasion, 
so a great deal of patience is required to get the most out of it. Persevere though, and some of the hardest, most elegant picks you've ever seen will start to emerge. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Science. Leave a comment below on your favourite rich light maker, or the best thing you've seen made from this wonderful stuff. Until next time, my name is John, this is Heavy Repping, and if you're not sure what to do in life, rep hard, rep heavy, and I'll see you soon.